Come in. You finished getting undressed? Yes, ma'am. All right, I'm back. Thank you for doing the health history portion for me. Um, okay, so we're going to move into the assessment part. Will you just confirm your name and birthday one more time for me? Patrick Douglas, okay. May 29th, 1986. Okay, good. Um, so I'm glad you picked it. We'll get this wellness check over with. Um, so I'm just going to listen to your heart and lungs, okay? So, and like I told you, I'm a JSU student. Okay. So um, I want to just go ahead and let you know we're going to kind of do this for educational purposes, okay? Yeah. So I'm going to kind of be talking to the camera. So in doing a chest assessment, okay, um, we, it's good to use some tangent, d tangential lighting. And this is checking for shadows on his chest, for abnormal shadows. First thing when I inspect... Okay, and I don't see anything. Um, when I'm looking at his um, chest right here, everything appears to be normal. Um, I do want to point out the landmarks. This is his sternum. Um, he, you can visibly see his sternal notch right here, both his clavicles and axilla. Um, right here at the stern, top of the sternum, there is a kind of a bump here, and this is the angle of Lewis. Um, which is one of our landmarks. And then you can clearly see his costal margins, and this part right here um, is his epigastrum, okay? The apex of his heart um, lies at this midclavicular line at the fifth intercostal space next to the left to, um, to the to the left of his sternum, okay? So it's about right in this area. So I'm looking in this area to see if I can see any, you know, heartbeat, if I can see any movement, and he's fairly muscular, so I don't really see a whole lot of movement, so we'll, we'll definitely palpate that. Um, so I'm gonna come around to this side, and I'm gonna um, kind of feel on your chest. So um, I'm gonna have you lie back, actually. Um, and I'll put this off your feet. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, palpate his the apex of his heart, okay? So if I put my hand right here, um, I can feel his heart beating, okay? And um, Patrick, if you'll turn your head to the left, I'm going to just kind of feel your carotid pulse here. And while I feel here, I'm just going to take a moment and check what your pulse is, okay? So just breathe easy, and I'm going to count for just a moment, for about 30 seconds. So I got his heartbeat right about 60, um, his resting heart rate, which I would expect for somebody kind of his age and size. Um, I also didn't tell him this. I counted his respirations while I was also kind of counting that. Um, and he's breathing about 12, 14 breaths a minute. Um, and that's kind of a trick you can do as a healthcare provider because if you tell the patient, hey, I'm gonna count your respirations, sometimes they vary sort of their breathing. So I'm gonna maintain um, kind of feeling his, his heart here. I'm also feeling for any vibrations, um, any sense of like a thrill, um, anything under the skin, and I don't feel anything. I also would feel here at his left sternal border, um, and again, I don't feel anything, and I would feel here at his right sternal border, and I don't feel anything. Um, and so palpation wise, he has a pretty negative assessment. The heart is, you know, in that chest cavity, so there's not a whole lot to palpate with the precordium. Okay, so while he's here, I am going to auscultate um, his heart. And when you listen to somebody's heart, um, you do need to listen with the bell and the diaphragm so that you can hear the different sounds. So Patrick, I'm going to listen, I'm going to, I have an electronic stethoscope and so I can switch from the bell and the diaphragm. So I'm going to listen right here at the apex of your heart and if you'll just, um, if you'll take a big deep breath and hold just for a second, I'm going to just feel your carotid pulse, okay? These two beats should coincide. Okay, you can breathe. Um, I can hear his S1 sound very clearly. I'm listening for that first heart sound, the lub. Um, I can hear it really, it's very strong. Um, and when I go to here for S2, I'm gonna move into the fourth intercostal space right here on this left side of the sternum. Because here in this pulmonic space, you can hear a variance in the S2 as a split when they inhale. Um, so Patrick, go ahead if you'll take a nice slow deep breath and hold at the top.
I did not hear a split a split sound, but I very go ahead and breathe. I very clearly can hear the dub. So he does have a very distinct S1 and S2 sound. I don't hear a S3 or S4, um, but I'm going to continue listening and move up to the third intercostal space, which is Herb's point. And I'm going to move to the pulmonic space right here in the second intercostal space to the left side of the border. And then come over to the right. And this is the aortic space. And while I'm listening, I'm also I'm listening for S1 and S2 in all, each space, but I'm also listening for murmurs and switching between the bell and the diaphragm. Um, Patrick, I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and have you lay onto your left side. And again, I'm going to reach kind of over you, and I'm going to listen to these same spots again. I'm going to come up here and listen to his aortic spot. When patients turn to their left side, these sounds are a little bit stronger because the heart is dependent on that left side. So we'll move to pulmonic, herbs point, his tricuspid, and then mitral at the apex. And again, I don't hear any murmurs, and I would switch and listen with the bell. All right, I'm going to have you sit up. I'm going to put this thing down for the feet. Once I get the patient back up into a sitting position, same thing. We've just changed position. So I'm going to listen to all those spots again. So I'll start here at the apex. And I'll switch between the bell. And move to his tricuspid. His heart rate's 57 right there. You can see my stethoscope will pick it up. He's got a low resting heart rate. And here we're at Herb's point, third intercostal space, left side of the sternum. And pulmonic, second space left, and then aortic. Good, your heart sounds good. So I'm gonna move over to this side and we'll move to the lung portion of the exam. Same thing with the lungs. As far as the lungs go, I've inspection-wise, I've already inspected his chest, and while I did that, I was looking sort of at other things. But I can tell you he's breathing very symmetrically. His color is good. I don't see any like uh, anything that stands out to me as far as his superficial venous structures. I will tell you that if you'll extend your neck just a little bit, when you're evaluating the respiratory portion, you do want to make sure that his trachea is midline. And as you can see right here, it is. It comes right down the center of his neck. Um, and so that's an important landmark among the others that we discussed earlier. And then also, if we'll come back here to his back, on the back side of his um, uh, uh, posteriorly, if you'll kind of extend your head down just a little bit, this this bump right here is the uh, C7 space, and so this is the end of his cervical vertebrae, and then it goes into T1, which is the top of his thoracic vertebrae. So while we're back here, we'll kind of continue on with palpation, um, and then we'll move back to the front. We'll kind of switch back and forth. So as far as palpation goes, and um, just kind of, you know, in his assessment, I want to make sure that when he breathes, that all of this movement is symmetric. So if I take my thumbs and I place them here about at his 10th intercostal, go ahead and take a real big deep breath and kind of bend over for me, Patrick. You'll see that my thumbs kind of spread apart. Big deep breath in and out. You'll see that my thumbs sort of spread apart like that. And that, you know, you can see how they move together. So the symmetry of his chest is really good when he takes a big deep breath. Um, again, I'll also palpate, you can sit up a little bit, I'll palpate sort of around his back and I'm feeling for any like subcutaneous air. I'm feeling for any fremitus, like tactile fremitus. And I'll also, um, and just any sort of vibratory sensations, which I don't feel. Patrick, if you'll go ahead, will you say 99 for me? 99. Good. Again. 99. Again. 99. Okay, and so that should feel symmetric on both sides, um, that tactile fremitus. Um, so we'll move back to the front. And again, do kind of the same thing. I'm going to feel sort of both sides of his chest, and I'm feeling for sub-Q air, um, you know, feeling for, you know, any kind of abnormalities, and I don't. And again, here at his costal margin, if I put my hands here, go ahead and take a big deep breath for me, you'll see that my fingers kind of spread as he takes a big deep breath and then it comes back together. And so this is very, you know, telling that just how symmetric his chest moves. We want that nice expansion on both sides. 
Um, will you say 99 also for me up front? 99. Good. 99. Good. 99. Perfect. So um, among the palpation part, we also do the percussion, okay? And so I want to hear this nice um, resonant sound with him when I'm listening to him. So I'll kind of start at the top, and I'm listening to these sounds. Okay, and that sounds very even throughout. Can you lift your hands up for me? Good, thank you. When we listen on the lateral side, you need to come both ways so that you can hear the difference bilaterally. Good. Okay, you put your arms down. Um, so we'll come back to the back and we'll also percuss his back. So again, we'll start up here at the top. Good. So, and again, it's a very resonant sound coming down. It sounds even throughout. Um, the next thing that I'm going to do is kind of measure his diaphragmatic excursion. Okay, so we're talking about sort of the movement of his diaphragm. So Patrick, it'll be kind of sort of the similar thing. I'm going to be percussing you like I was. If you'll just kind of lean forward for me and give yourself a little bit of a hug. <clears throat> okay, so what we're going to do is start at the top. If you'll take a big deep breath and hold it. Okay, and see, I'm listening for this chap, the, the dullness, the change in the sound right there. Okay, go ahead and let that breath out. And then when you let it out, hold it at the end. Okay, let that out. And we'll do the other side. Okay, do you need a break? Or are you okay? You're doing okay? All right, so big deep breath in and hold. Okay, and go ahead and breathe, and then hold it at the bottom. Okay, so as far, go ahead and breathe if you're holding your breath, sorry. So as far as um, his diaphragm goes, typically this side might be a little bit higher, um, where I heard it, it might be a little bit higher there. Um, the liver is over here, so the diaphragm does has to kind of account for that space. Um, and then we also measure this. So as long as it's within three centimeters, we're normal. And he's about two and a half there and about two there. Okay. So, so um, I'm going to take a quick listen to you. So that's good. That's normal. Both of those are normal findings. So I'm going to take a quick listen. Now we'll move to auscultation. Take a big deep breath for me. in and out of your mouth. Good, and while I'm back here, I'll also do vocal re resonance, say 99. 99. 99. 99. Again. 99. Again. 99. Good, and then we'll come up here to the front and we're gonna auscultate the front of his chest. Big deep breath. Good. And would you lift your hands up for me? Good. Big deep breath. Good. Big deep breath. Big deep breath. Good. Well, that pretty much concludes it. Your lungs sound great. Everything sounds clear. Um, as far as the assessment goes, that concludes the chest and the heart and um, the lungs. Do you have any questions for me? Great. Well, I'm going to step out. It's nice to meet you. Um, thanks for coming in, and we'll get you set up as a new patient and just get checked out of there, okay? Good to meet you.